Hey, I'm Susie Phillips. And I'm Scott Phillips. And are you ready to have a party? Because that's what we're doing today on the America Wood Shop. We're getting ready for a party. We need cutting boards and? Charcuterie boards. Okay, so learn all those tips today to make your very own. Stay around. The American Wood Shop with Scott Phillips is brought to you by? Woodcraft, since 1928. Providing traditional and modern woodworking tools and supplies to generations of craftsmen. Woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Pro Tools, for tool pros. Rikon Tools. Woodcraft Magazine. Projects, plans, and web links designed to help you make wood work. P.S. Wood, home of Timberwolf Swedish Silicon Steel bandsaw blades and super sharp scroll saw blades. A bed to sleep on. A table to share meals. A house that feels like a home. The Furniture Bank of Central Ohio. Providing furniture to neighbors in need. Now, what are the best woods to use in your kitchen? Well, you can't beat hard maple. Think and walnut. Yeah, and it, they take great food safe finishes, and you'll see more on that in a second. But we're going to cut out this pattern right here. Go to the woods, find a neat leaf, blow it up to the size you want, and you can have a cutting board on one side or a ladle rest on the other. We'll do a glued up cutting board, as it were, and our charcuterie board, which is great for serving meats, cheeses. It's a totally stress-free party, so okay. really easy, and it's a beautiful display. So it's time to get to it in the wood shop, but first, a word about shop safety. Be sure to read, understand, and follow the instructions that come with the tools and products you use. Now, let's make these. All right. I've got the perfect walnut board. Well, perfect, except for this little check mark that I'm gonna cut out and sculpt it, but it's gonna make a beautiful charcuterie board. So I'll cut it out on the bandsaw using a 3 8 inch blade. Now, Susie, that's a perfect looking board. Thanks. I'm using a handheld planer because I love my wife. Uh, this <laughs> is going to save you a ton of sanding time. Thank you. You could sand straight to this rough sawn board, but boy, it'd take forever. So I'll get this plane down both sides, and then it's on to you for a sanding workshop. <laughs> Now, Susie, I have both sides plain for you. Thank you. Sanding workshop. All Take it right. away. Okay, I've got three sanders here. I've got a five inch random orbital sander. I've got a smaller one. And I've got a detailing sander here that I like to use along the edges and to knock off the edges here and on the sides. So make sure you have all your safety gear. I've got my hearing protection, my dust mask, my safety glasses, and a shield. So. I'm going to get to it. And also, I'm starting with 80 grit, then I'll go to 100, and then 150. And then you can buff it, whatever you want to do. Depends on how smooth the board is. So time to get started. Scott, right, if you, you will take these, get all this ready. It's over here. And here we go.
Okay, after about three hours sanding, I've got it finished and I think this is the perfect side. So I've got a salad bowl finished, which is food safe. I tacked it off too, just to get all the dust particles off. And I am gonna brush it on and this is when all the magic happens. I get so excited when it's time to finish it because you can really see the beautiful grain come out. I mean, look at that, wow. I love it, I love it. So, I, while she was out there sanding, I made another smaller version right here. <laughs> and so I'm bringing the grain up of this knot. And that's what you want with your boards. You want a lot of character. Oh, and yeah. so we'll brush this out, both sides. It, yep. Whenever you're working with things like this for food contact, you need to seal all the edges, the bottom as well to preserve it. And the other thing about salable finish, you can rejuvenate this, a light sanding, clean it and bring it back up. So once we get this dry, we'll attach hardware and you'll see how this stacks up. And so Susie, I'm going to let you show that to camera because this is Look at a that. glory board. That is just awesome. And I'm so excited. It is. It's going to be beautiful. I'll swing it around and get the other side. Okay, so you have this under control. I Stir do. Stir the finish well for it to work properly and give it about a week of drying before food contact and you're in business. So it's off to the bantle to make a great little cutting board out of a maple leaf pattern. How about that? Now on a bandsaw, you can use a quarter inch blade to cut this out. It's hard maple, sugar or rock hard, you name it, all the same tree. The stuff you get maple syrup from, and that's a piece of cherry, but this is the mating rock hard maple board glued up with a good waterproof food safe glue, wood glue. And now what I'm going to do is cut it out. And with that quarter inch six tooth blade and dust collection, on we go at, you can dial in a perfect speed, 3950 right here. And look at how quickly this comes into form. Now when you come into a tight spot, Cut out, set the scrap safely, not on the floor, but safely nearby, and in no time you'll have your pattern. You never want to back out of a cut on a bandsaw, that's bad form. You can pinch the blade, and when you pinch the blade, you're going to pull it forward, and it's going to come off and hit the guard. That's just bad news. The other thing is you want to make sure the stem that's the handle runs with the grain, not across the grain. If it's across the grain, it'll break right out. So once I get this cut out, it's outside to sculpt it. So much fun. Band salts are my favorite tool. Oh, I love my wood legs. So that's how the leaf shapes up from the band saw. And Susie wants this for her ladle on her oven. So I need to scallop this out to hold that. N95 dust mask required because we're going to use tungsten carbide cutters to scallop this out. We could use hand chisels. There are a bunch of different ways to do this. There are different types of cutters, different grits. We're using a coarse today Sleeves rolled up, leather apron, never gloves. But the guard is still on the grinder. And when you use this, both hands are always on the grinder. You put your elbows to your side and this is how you can work this around very carefully. So now I'll take this right on down and make it scalloped out and then I'll use some sanders to smooth it out and then it's inside to see if the finish is dry on her project. Oh, 
boy, that's looking good, Susie. Yeah, yeah, they both are. Okay, so you have that flipped over, you're working on the feet, but yep. before we go down that road, what do you think? Oh, that's pretty. I love it. Okay. That's great. And then I can use the other side, cutting board or trivet, whichever. Exactly. Beautiful. Okay. And so here are some other ideas. When you go to hollow things like this, they sell different types of cutters. I always go with the red tungsten carbide. That's my favorite. Blue works as well, different grits. And then for your angle grinder, they also sell these sanding discs that you can really smooth things out. And then to polish it, let's say you don't have fancy uh, polishers, you can put a padded disc on your drill and these are peel and stick. And what's nice about this, you can really flex that foam back disc yeah, and, and really sand and sculpt it out. So we'll put <laughs> a different finish on this in a second. But what are you working on I right now? I am putting the feet on. I've got this one on and drilling the pilot hole right here. So I've got a little marking line right there. So I'm going to drill that. Now, just a second here, because yep. if this grain was running this way on this piece and you put it here on this long running board, that would be called cross grain fastening. And that would lead to checks in this top board because this board's going to expand and contract a lot. So you want the grain running harmoniously. So what you do is harmonious grain, long grain running this way on both pieces. And I did a bunch of glue ups and then just cut them up and then cut them in half to come up with the feet. So now when she fixes this to the bottom of the board, it'll never split out the top. Right. So you're lined up. Go ahead and finish Thank this. Thank you. Okay. okay. Just gonna drill a little pilot hole right in here. Okay, now that's set and the point yep. goes all the way through. So line right back up and now you're going to use the driver. Okay, again, wax on the screw. That way For sure. you can back it out if you need to. There we go. That looks really good. Yeah. Okay, now the next thing that we're working on, let's flip that over and show them what that looks like. Okay. Good. Look at mm -hmm. that. And so that raises it. You don't need handles under that because of the feet that are on right. it. That looks so cool, babe. Are you happy with yeah, it? Yeah, I'm very happy. Okay. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Now, for this one that we can stack on top, again, the whole idea is something unusual to be more festive. Right. So the hardware here on this, since this one won't have feet, I have to pre-drill everything. And so to do that, I have to take her driver bit out and I have this bit with the stop and you could use some tape on this and I go until that stops like that and I use this template to fix the position of the holes for the hardware. These are handy because they work with whatever hardware you're working on. Now I can flip that over to the back and then I can because I have the hole all the way through, dimple this down, and now I can <clears throat> fix the handles as it were. So this goes up and on, if we've done this right, just like that, good tight fit, and it gets screwed in from the back. Very cool. Okay, so I'll do that on the other end as well. Now. To do the final buff on this, talk about the butcher block conditioner here. Yeah, after we have did the salad bowl finish, then you can add the butcher block conditioner to it. You can't do the reverse. You can't do the, the butcher block conditioner, then add the finish. That doesn't work, but this is great. It's got wax in there, beeswax, and food grade mineral oil, and, and just really bring up the sheen. Boy, that looks good. And so she put her glove on. But right, the right way. With food grade finishes like this one, uh, it's totally safe to use it on your hands. Yeah. Okay, so I'll let you get that Thank finished. Thank you. Okay, man, look at that crane, oh, it's, it's on awesome. fire. Okay, so that's her, what do you call this again? My charcuterie board. Easy for you to say. <laughs> now, okay, let's go do a glued up live edge butcher block cutting board of our own. Okay. Oh yeah. Get that finished, looking Get to good. Work. See these, these are maple plugs. They're like a mini cork. And the small ends, three eighths of an inch in diameter. And 
where I have counterboard holes that are deeper than countersunk holes that are flush to the surface. You tap that home and that finishes the edge. Now, these feet are longer, but it's still not cross grain. The grain is harmonious on the feet and on the glued up top. I want you to look at this. Okay, and that's a cutting board. And that's a hard maple center for the cutting and the sides for your foods for your layout. So life's too short to have ugly cutting boards. Now to do that, we need a bandsaw, we need some wood. I've got a beautiful piece of figured hard maple right here for the middle. And then on this live edge chunk of air dried walnut, I've had this for 20 years, couldn't figure out what to do with it. It has a knot in the middle. And you cannot have knots and checks and cutting boards because if you do, what happens is that can be a place that food can get into and bacteria can grow, so it has to be solid wood. The other thing is on live edge, you can't have any bark, as pretty as it is, not when you're using it to serve food. So, okay, now to work with this piece of walnut, I'm using that hold fast to hold it down and we're gonna get that bark off. No bark on cutting boards. And so you lay the bevel down, just like that, and you chisel away the bark. I'm trying not to get into the wood. It's all going to be sanded down, and you get the bark off, okay? So that's important. And then <clears throat> what I do is I use a good rule and a white marking pencil, white Marks on dark wood, a whole lot easier to work with. And we're going to release the knot right here because that can't be used in food contact. And to do that, we're going to use the bandsaw. And I'm going to set this up with a three quarter inch blade. The wider the blade, the better the cut, okay, when you're doing a straight cut. And so with that, this is three teeth per inch on a three quarter inch blade. And this is unpowered and locked off so it can't accidentally start up. Let me just show you how easy it is to tune up your bandsaw. This is important because if you're going to use a bandsaw and it's a go-to tool in any shop, I have to release the tension of the blade. That's right there. Now I take the blade off like so. Okay, so now I have to bring that up and on, being careful with it all, and have to make some adjustments here. Ease it up onto the tires, looking good like that. Now I have to back the tire down a bit, like that. Bring the blade up and on. Adjust the no tool blade supports the bearing, the toolless blade supports right here. And now what I can do is put tension back on it, throw the tension arm up, bring it up, and then I have to track the blade. Now, when I spin this, I always keep my finger on the outside of the upper wheel, never on the inside like that, okay? That's for safety. Do you hear anything right now? No, and that's the way it's supposed to be. It sh nothing should be touching that blade. And to track it, so that the center of the blade is on the center of the top of the tire, I just crank this knob on the back. If I want the blade to come forward, I crank the knob towards me. If I want the blade to go back, I crank it away from me. Now that's perfect right there, and I lock it in place. Now, how do you tension the blade? Wrong question. What you have to do right now, I'm going to crank this up just a bit and I'm going to lock the column and again you don't hear metal on metal it's free so what I'm going to do with decent tension on it right now I'm going to add a little bit more okay and the scale is only going to get me in the ballpark I'll show you how to use your fingers with it unplugged to determine exactly what you want so I'm going to bring the side bearings up and just gently kiss a blade well behind the valley of the gullet. Okay, and then I bring forward the thrust bearing until it almost touches, but not quite. So now I'll spin it 
And that's perfect right there. And I have to do the same thing below the table to control that blade. And most people don't go below the table. They think, oh, I got that taken care of above. Well, no. Same thing below that's up above. And I love the fact that I don't have to go out and grab any wrenches to adjust those bearings. That means you're going to do them the right way. Now that's good. Swing the door up and on. Guard up, locked in place. Everything's locked there. Leveling key in the cast iron plate. Locks back in, keeps everything flush and smooth. Swing this guard shut, lock it in place. And now, as I spin it, you can hear metal on metal, except it's the bearings rolling. So here's the test drive right now. Everything's good. And remember, I told you I was going to tell you how to tension it. Now watch, when I put good side pressure on that blade, about 20 pounds of pressure, that shouldn't flex more than a 16th of an inch. If it does, add a little bit more tension. And then at the end of the job, make sure you back the tension off at the end of the day when it's not running, when it's unplugged, and you're in business. Now, let's make some cuts. Here we go. Safety gear up and on. These are safety glasses. That's important. Hearing protection. I'll turn on dust collection. And another thing for control and safety, you want this guide block assembly, which is what this is called, or guide bearing assembly, to be within a quarter of an inch of the surface of the board, the top surface. That's going to take flex out of the blade, and that'll give you a straighter cut. So, dust collection on, we'll make those cuts, and then it's over to the jointer. Now don't tell Susie that I use the planer and the joiner to save hours of work, but that's what happens in the wood shop. Now I'm using a silicone pad on my bench, and if I get a little bit of glue on the workbench, I'm not worried about it. I just use a card scraper and half an hour it comes right off without damaging the bench. So I'm using a wonderful waterproof glue that's food safe for indirect contact, and now I just clamp it all up, and I want clamps on, See that glue bead right there? Clamps on smooth edges for one hour, and then I can trim off the ends. But remember, all this is predicated on first jointing those edges so you have perfect seams that come together. So joint those good, true, square, straight edges. And then I run it through the planer to make the boards perfect. And so I get glue ups just like this. Once the glue up was dry, I took it to the bandsaw and I sculpted these two graceful ends and then did a bit of sanding. And Susie, those finished. Thank Boards you. Awesome. I love them. This one with the handle, you can put on blocks if you want to raise it up. Or the long one with the blocks underneath. Just beautiful. Look at that grain. I mean, wow. <laughs> Can't wait to have a party. Are you ready? I'm ready. And one tip on using any of these wiping finishes, again, this is completely food safe, beeswax and food grade mineral oil, is you want to put it on the rag and then wipe it out. It'll give you a better result. Now Beautiful. that's it for this week on the American Wood Shop. And Susie, next week, tell us about your table. Oh, it's pretty wild. It is a beautiful sycamore root, so. Wait till you see it. It's, okay. it's different. <laughs> and then I'll be using mixed medium materials, a lot of metal bases with wood tops. So, hey, that's it for this week from the American Wood Shop. Now, go spice up your kitchen. Woodcraft, since 1928, providing traditional and modern woodworking tools and supplies to generations of craftsmen. Woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Pro Tools for Tool Pros. Rikon Tools. 
Woodcraft Magazine. Projects, plans, and web links designed to help you make wood work. P.S. Wood, home of Timberwolf Swedish Silicon Steel bandsaw blades and super sharp scroll saw blades. A bed to sleep on. A table to share meals. A house that feels like a home. The Furniture Bank of Central Ohio, providing furniture to neighbors in need. For more information on tips behind the American Woodshop and watch free episodes 24-7, check us out online and like us on Facebook.